Hey guys, this is DD, aka Dark Frozen Depths, and it's gonna be a little bit waggy and crap, but this may or may not be the last Elsa video I do, but it depends because not too many seem to be into this type of stuff. But something I want to out there is my little setup for um Metamorphy now. I had one for um when she was the Dimension Witch, but now things are like way, way later down the line, so things have definitely changed. I know a few things I'm trying to go after that I don't have just yet is um mod guillotine press and um mod heavy press because um mod heavy press can actually do a surprising amount of damage. But yeah, I'm currently grinding for one of those. I'm not able to get the second one, but. Anyways, I, th I would try to make this a little bit easier. Let me see. Oh, and just a heads up. Um, I don't have any of that extra stuff that somebody else might have, like fancy mic and all this other stuff. So you're going to hear clicking noises. You're going to hear a lot of stuff. That's why I tried to make things as quiet as possible. My login things even popped up. It's just the fact that I don't have all that fancy stuff. So, yeah. I mean, simply put, that's just how it is. <laughs> well, they're giving some good stuff. But anyways, um... Yeah, that's the whole thing with this. It's like... I gotta do what I gotta do with what I have, so... Unfortunately, that's how it is. Otherwise, I'd be recording this... And also recording my voice at the same time. You'd still hear all that stuff to get, but I'd have a clear voice for this. And then I'd have to sit and try and go through the video, try to match up my voice audio with it. I'm not going through all that. And it usually doesn't even come out right, so what's the point? But anyways, some stuff I'm showing for my setup. You'll eventually get the void weapon or whatever. Just grind adds dungeon. But, more or less, once you get a legend weapon that you do plan on keeping or using for a while or something. My setup was to try and get as much maximize on it as possible. Crit if you want as well, but try to get sage stones for that. If you can get 12% like I do, that really helps. Before, it used to be numbers, so you had to do all this weird calculation crap. They made it easier. It says percent how much is giving. Sages will always give you anywhere between 7 to 12%, I do believe. Half of that if it's on the armor. So, that said, maximize crit, go for it. Same case for a weapon, when you have a, um, a costume weapon. And then there's an IB one that I have, so that's why I'm able to get two slots. That really helps. Try to get any IB weapon you can. I've had a perky sauce one for who knows how long. So, that's where that comes in. And I even magic wardrobed it so it looks like a cane for some reason. I don't know why. I took that off my um my VP because I never advanced in Oz. But yeah, and then this this little slot right here, just get whatever helps you a lot. Attack speed, crit, maximize, all that's good stuff. But um now you will want three of these, which is the um dimension master items. You get those from doing the, um, the Sinister Intent fights. You're going to have to run through it, like, three times at least. I'd say four, I think, in order to fully get everything. You just want three items. If you want more, be my guess. It does increase your maximum MP. They also give some, some decent stats on top of it, for accessories anyway. But you just need a 3 for the, the physical magical increase. That's your main target. But again, no problem if you go after all of them. Because honestly, I got something better that increases stuff than these. Which would be the Ignea set. So between all three pieces of Ignea and then three pieces of the um, Dimension Master, I have 7% physical magical. Something to know about. There's also a ring out there too. Um... No, not ring and necklace. The, um, one of the Velder, two of the Velder necklaces, in fact. They also increase attack power. Something to know about. 
If I had that, it'd be a 10% increase, I do believe. But, um, I also magic wardrobe all those to change that stuff. The face accessory I literally do have. But, um, like, this that isn't too bad. It gives a critical increase. This other stuff's this basic stuff. You might also want to do a Retta for some of these items, because some of the upgraded um, stuff, like the upgraded Mana Necklace, is actually pretty good. It's giving me an Add Red boost right here, so that really helps, on top of the normal MP increase. Now, MP gain increase on this job route, which is Metamorphy, is dependent on you, but I do it just to speed things up a little bit further. Spamming skills is Aisha's forte, regardless of the route, so... MP cost, cooldown, MP gain, that's all very good stuff to actually get for her. My suggestion for that, though. I mean, everybody's got their own preference, but really, most of her damage comes from skills. Simple as that. Most of anybody's damage comes from skills, but she's got a very, all three routes have a good way of getting it. Speaking of which, any ring to try and aim towards stuff... The main target for um, Metamorphy now has shifted from Bravery to Strength, from what I found out. I've been running a Strength build long before that. But that's the whole thing. A lot of her Bravery skills got, got nerfs and changes and all sorts of other stuff where her Strength skills actually end up doing more damage in most cases. The only exceptions would probably be Nova and um, Energy Spurt. At least out of her skill tree. If you're talking about the shared Isis skill tree, you can probably add on Gust Storm. But I'll get to why you probably shouldn't for this route later on. But Strength skill ring, Bravery skill ring, those are the two to aim for. Don't get tenacity, don't get um flexibility. And considering how she's very, very good with her Awakening, once you hit third job, you might actually want to ring a Fury. It'll increase your Awakening charge rate, and if you're doing player... Player versus player, it's still going to increase it, but dungeons and all that, it's going to automatically give you 3 bead. Dungeons it will grant you 3 bead right out the gate. You can just go right in there. And then, um, equipment. Eventually aim for the El El Rio node stuff because it's the best in the game, given all the stuff you can do with it. And then they made some recent stuff to pretty much base it off it of because Elrian Node is the closest we get to legendary armor unless they come up with something later down the line. And then you got the um, Void Weapon, which gives you a lot of different effects. There's um there's a new Raid Weapon, which is also going to give you a lot of good stuff. I'm not sure how good the Jirbaki stuff is. You can get it if you want. But Elrian Node, top priority for your armor. And you definitely want to get the L tiers to try and bump it up in the higher 20s. I managed to re-roll enough times and actually get that. Because I do believe it's the triangles. But if you get a unique. And um, whatever gives you the tier level. That's automatically 20 level 21 to 30. You want to aim for unique. Nothing below that. Especially for the other stuff too. Because they start giving you some really good stuff like I got. Critical damage here, critical rate here, critical damage here, maximize here, critical damage here, critical damage here. You want a lot of critical damage. Because you're trying to get your maximize and your critical up, and then critical damage is tied in with your critical rate. So there you go. Some other stuff I managed to roll out. Everybody's critical when their party with me is increased by 7%. I can get better. My strength skill cooldown goes down by 10%, so I can start spamming it even more. And there's more to it than that when we get on later. All my skill damage increased. Self-explanatory. Everybody's maximized when they're with me. Up by 8%. So that's a very good stack. I don't have the stuff to increase the specific skills though. I just got it just to get the Keller effects. I'm still trying to re-roll for those. But when it comes down to it, I might have to get some other stuff. Titles. Well, given the whole thing with combat power and all that, you may be losing some from not having specific titles. I got two titles that you can't get anymore, which is Reaper and Ofer Ruin. Ofer Ruin lets you pretty much have no critical, period, point blank, no matter how much you socket it and all that. It makes critical useless to socket. 
but it gives a chance to where for like a certain amount of time you can do infinite critical hits and the damage on them is also increased so it's like when it activates you get to all that i think it's eight seconds i can double check it when i if i go to my titles reaper it's a summoning type title it's very good because these swords all also have some very good effects like one of them can lower enemy defense one just goes straight through a whole bunch of stuff, having a little bit of a range function, and then one automatically targets them, too. So, there's a lot of options with that. Reaper is actually pretty good. It's been nerfed a few times. That's how good it is. But, um... It wouldn't be insane or it'd be Landox. And view equip titles. Yeah, see, here's Ofer Ruin right there. Cannot be obtained, and you had to go through a lot of crap to get it. A lot of crap. So if you didn't have these, oh well. It's only for the longer time players. If you got the newer ones, you can probably aim for some other stuff. Like Maya's title could be okay. A few from um, El Rio Node, especially if you can get the um, the Els Tower title. It's pretty much a replacement for Reaper. So those are very good titles. But if you're looking for combat power, give, get whatever gives the most stats across the board. Like... Even one called, um, I don't know where it is. It's called Returning to Ruben, I do believe. I just can't find where it's at. It might be further down. Yeah, this one. It gives 1% to a whole bunch of stuff, but it actually increases combat power by quite a bit. So the more stat increases you can get, the more combat power you get out of it. Like, light speed will give you quite a bit, too, if you manage to get that. But that's the thing with titles. Now, um... Of course, the same socketing rules apply if you get costumes. Eventually, you should get one because they're free. You just gotta grind enough ED. Now, if you get Ice Burner ones, it's even better because they come with better effects. I managed to pull the, um, the Mariposa Requiem when it was out. So, I managed to get four top pieces of that. Along with the hair. Well, no, the hair is something different. It's Street Star. But I think I did pull the hair and I sold it. But, um, yeah. And then I got an invisible costume suit from the item mall. Item mall can get you some stuff too. It's also how you try to get ice burners, hopefully. If you're not buying them off the board. But all this stuff is giving me some nice little effects. I got a movement speed increase of 18%. I don't need a socket anymore. If you get one of those, that's it. That's it. That's the only speed increase you need besides attack speed. Now, it's argued that jump speed could be used too, but all it really does is increase jump height. It doesn't increase how fast you move in the air. So, if you know the trick to actually get a little bit more height, a few of them in, in the case of Aisha, then don't worry about jump speed. But your main socketing is attack speed up until you get 60, not 60, yeah, I wish you could get 60, but attack speed until you get 20%, then maybe get a, um movement speed increase if it happens to come out of a sage stone but just one and hopefully a good one like this 18 percent one i got then just suck it suck it all critical and maximize after that period just period if you're rolling a whole bunch of sage stones and all that it will really help out but also i have if you look at um my own resonance i have mp cost reduction School cooldown reduction, EXP gain. Here's the reason why you're going to need these three. Drop ready if you want to grind a lot too. But here's the reason why you need these three. Skill consumption cuts down the MP you use for skills. Self-explanatory. Skill cooldown. You're able to use them again faster. Again, self-explanatory. These two combined make an excellent combo when it comes to skill spamming, especially since Metamorphy gains a lot of MP... Off of this one skill right here. Magical makeup. Or her second hyper if you use it. She can get so much MP it's crazy. And that just helps her skill fam spam even further. There's also EXP gain. Where it helps you grind more resonance levels. And honestly. I would aim for maybe 40 to both. Um, consumption and cooldown. And then. 
also try to get as much EXP gain as you can get as well, and then just start feeding it all into um all your increases in the strength, and then maybe bravery, maybe the um the max HP MP if you feel like it, the item drop rate. But the main ones you definitely want to aim for is these two at 40, this at 100. So you're going to need a resonance level of 180. It takes a lot of EXP to grind, and that's why you need the EXP gain. If you get a second page, it's even easier because you can just throw it all the EXP gain out the gate and use that as your grind page. But that's the basics of that. All that said and done... Hopefully I can pull that up. Okay, all that said and done... You're going to end up with a lot of neat stats here, like... My critical damage is up by another 8%. My critical chance says 64 but in dungeons, it gets an additional 7. Keep that in mind. Maximize is almost 100 with the combined um, effect from the um, gear. I do 13% additional damage, which kind of helps too. But it's not as important. You might want some damage reduction too. I get it at least 20%. But there's all that. My physical and magical is really high because I got a plus 11 weapon. I got 122% attack speed. And I can get more on that one. I'll let you know about why. My MP cost is cut down by 15%. When it comes to regaining MP, I get over 33%. About 34 and 35% really. When it comes to my cooldowns, all of them get a natural 11.4%. Strength gets another 10% from effects. Oh, so they do apply it. Okay. And yeah, I got like, um, however much is set on the critical maximize. Awakening charge speed is 25% because of that ring. The duration you don't need. If you're hitting enough, you won't need it. But I also get this stuff right here. Like, I got 20% more move speed. I don't know where the jump speed came from, but okay. My EXP gain is like 24%. That's stuff to really go after. Like the EXP gain, the move speed, the item drop rate, if you can get it. I get it from um from the monostone effects off of this. But it also gave me some more cooldowns and all this other stuff too. Eventually you'll be able to grind out monostones. I got a lot of blue stage too, go figure. But um Yeah, that's the basics of all that. Now, here's the reason why I can actually get extra um, speed. I guess something else is kind of rare. Good luck getting your hands on this now, even though some people might still sell it. In dungeons, 5% chance to increase move, attack, and jump speed by 20% for 10 seconds. Very, 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 very good, because it's not even normalized. It's just a raw 20%. So, if you say you hit the cap of 130%, well, you got 150 while this is there. Other stuff, we might just try to add to that 130% cap and it won't go no further. Like, say, the um, one of the secret dungeon sets where it's like the um, Sandblast, I think it's called. And it'll, it'll just do a natural increase and not a... Um, it'll do like a um, normalized increase and not a raw increase. That's what I mean. So, yeah, that's the whole thing with that. But this also works for the entire party. So anybody with me also can get this effect. It's a, They got their own 5% chance to increase their own stats by that. Mysterious Old Lord equipment is very good, depending on what it is. I used to have one that reduced all cooldowns by, I think, a second. It was between 1 to 5, yeah, 5 seconds. 1% chance to re reduce cooldowns by a raw 5 seconds period. I sold that one because my cooldowns are fine now, but my god, was that amazing when I did have it. Those are some good stuff if you can manage to get your hands on it, but it's beyond expensive. I'll probably say this, you're not getting them unless you're burning out like billions upon billions of ED. Now, getting on to the main bread and butter things because I've been talking a lot. Not sparring, I want free training.
because this is what I mean by the um, skills and all this stuff. First things first, I need to change the um, target to woe because he can move and get whacked around. Now, here's how you do things. I'm going to just do this to quickly get my MP and all that. Now, always, always try to be an awakening as much as possible. While you're doing that, also use this energetic body down here. The original. Because what the original does is reduce all cooldowns by 20% when you get the, um, the locked passive from Transcendence. And then on top of that, the Awakening is also reducing cooldowns by 30%. So, this normally has a cooldown of 90 seconds. With all that stuff I have combined, watch how low it is. Like Awakening, Energetic, Magical Makeup. 40 second cooldown. And then when you're burning out MP2, like, I'm out of it. Double star balls. They tend to build it up quite nicely. But that's in groups. When there's one opponent, the Z combos. There you go. You can also use both however you want, but really the Z combos work best on one, while the star balls work best on two. Now I also got petrified and, and I'm freezing. Freezing because it's the fence drop, petrify because, you know. But now I grouped them together. And look, I can use makeup again. I'm going to use these over here. See how fast the MP is going back, right? That's the thing with the double star balls. It can also be the same thing with the Z combo. And the Z combo also gets magic stats, so it does splash damage, hitting them both pretty nicely. Like, see, I got three hits, and it's supposed to be two targets. Splash damage. All this is really adding up to a lot of hits. Now, PvP, you don't want a lot of hits, but PvE, get as many hits as you can. Simple. And also utilize your combos pretty well to push and pull stuff. Like, for instance, I could do all this stuff, keep the combo going without knocking them down. I'm not going into full details on how to pull that off, but it helps. Even crappy combos like this. Because you see it, put them in um, Petrify. But then, never do that one. That's the one you don't want to do. Or this. Because those are knockbacks. Unless they get Petrified somehow, those are knockbacks. Even when you go into this, you don't want the knockback. You just want to just unload damage, period. My pet also does a lot too. Done right, you can really r rack up damage, rack up MP, rack up skill spam, all of that. In fact, I want to reset this location. Oh wait, I don't know if there's something to reset it, but um, I'm gonna up this. In fact. Just bring out multiple lows. And watch, I can do something to load. And look at this MP gain. This is without makeup, so imagine with it. Because I'm just now using it. And MP gain is absurd. Again, the strength of Aisha is not how much damage she does, but more so how often you can pull her moves.
that is a very good thing to have. Now, in the case of what moves you probably should use, because these are the ones that also not only use much damage, but, I mean, also do a lot of damage, but they're also going to give you um, some decent MP options. Always have teleport for mobility, because you need to get out of there sometimes, and it does activate a passive where it will also give you more um, additional damage. I'll get to that eventually. Ugh, there goes the thing. I'm running out of space, so I gotta hurry this up. But, um... Gust Storm. Lots of damage, but it's magical. Your physical class. You're better off taking physical skills, especially since you can really increase your physical damage. So anything that says magical, don't even really use it. This is maybe the only exception, but only because you can rapid fire it so much. This is PvP. Don't even worry about it. Get the super armor effect if you use it. I have makeup. And I don't know if they changed this. Somehow I don't have Killing Blow 1. Okay, that's weird. But, um... Oh, I see. Last longer or cooldown drop. That's what they did with it. Okay. I meant to take the cooldown drop. Because the 80%... The 80% cooldown probably would have did a lot. But, um... Okay, they changed that. But anyways... Get the skill, have it on your tree at all times, no matter how many slots you have or whatever, because guess what? It's what makes this class this class. Fitness is going to get a buff pretty soon, but more or less it's more physical, max MP increase, very good passive. Ignore these, this is PvP, this is a clearing skill that's magic damage, but you don't really need it. This, buff your physical strength, use it if you, use it if you got the space. This most damaging skill you got outside of hypers. Use it. Does some very good grouping and a lot of clearing. It's pr one of the two bravery skills that are still very good. This. If you can get the mod version, that really helps out on this. Even if you can, it's still got some stun capability for utility. This, you don't really need it. It's just more to recover HP. This, grouping. Lots and lots of grouping. Honestly, when I get mod um, guillotine press, I'm probably going to drop this, but this can activate some stuff too, like the, um, the weapon effects, like freezing and all that, so it does help. But it helps with a lot of grouping. This do, does a lot of damage, can ignore some defense, you can get some very good range with this one. It's not too bad to actually have, especially since you can use a midair and the flying mobs are annoying. Magic Staff, like I said, has a little vibration hit chance. Very good to have. Lowers your knockdown, increases your MP recovery. Very good. Oh, and that, the extra hit of splash damage. This is good whether you get mod or not, but only for PvP. Now, when you get the mod version, it can be used in dungeons as well. Just make sure something can't move. If it can't move, then it's going to do a lot of damage in dungeons. That's why I got the Petrify. This... Mod version, good for dungeons. Normal version, good for PvP. All you really need to know. It's going to help you out with utility in PvP. Damage increase while in dungeons. And it lets you do, do other stuff while it's doing damage. Just do not memorize it. It is useless memorized if you get the mod version. This one, force version is better. Period. But it does a lot of damage. And do not worry about these. Don't ever put a trait on it. Even if it's PvP, don't ever put a trait on it. Energetic body. Don't use mod. Get the resource consumption and go from there. You don't need the recovery chance. If you're going to use it, Impact Hammer, mod version. But it's more PvP because it'll give you an extra stun option. And use whatever trait you want because it, it both doesn't really help it too much. Okay, Monofoil Overdrive is an interesting one. Based on your current MP, it can increase your move speed or your your um, physical attack damage. The more MP you have, the more physical. The less MP you have, the more speed. Very good period point blank, especially in PvP. Okay, Space Leap. This is the one I was talking about. Whenever you teleport, you get an additional damage increase. Period. 
there's some little multi-use penalty or whatever, but honestly, I don't even know what where it comes in from, because the multi-use is non-existent in PvE, and you got cooldowns in PvP. So, Arena and all that stuff is where the multi-use would come in, but it doesn't seem to do anything. But, attack power increase? Very useful, and it lasts for 20 seconds. This is your first hyper skill, use, use a crap out of this one. At least until you get the second one. The second one is where things get situational. More on that later. This, not useful in dungeons, very good in arena. Lower the cooldown and spam the crap out of this. This one. It's going to get reworked a little bit so it works for special actives as well. But, um, pretty much when you land hits, physical damage, and I mean physical damage reduction, I mean physical re defense reduction goes down on enemies and you can stack it. You just can't reapply it until every 7 seconds, but longer to fight, the more damage you're going to start dealing off of this. This one, troll skill for PvP. If you use it right. You can't get super armor for it, so that's why I said that. Awaken one. Stat boost. Okay, I'm really starting to run out. Um, Crazy Worm. Very good strong skill. Get heavy, use it. Taste, I told you about. Impact Zone, no matter which one you use, it's getting weaker and weaker. But I prefer to force one because it's less situational. These passives, I'm not even going to go full detail, but no, they were very, very good. Very, very, very good. And then your Hyper can deal crap tons of damage, like a half of a million percent, if you use it right. But you gotta get a lot of hits off. But anyways, that's all I got for this video, guys. Vid's definitely getting laggy, because I'm running out of computer space for some weird reason. But, um, anyways, if this doesn't come out right, expect me to re-upload it, if you got this far. But, anyways.